Hello everybody and welcome to the 17th financial charting tutorial with Python and Matplotlib where we left off we added this simple moving average or two simple moving average lines of 12 and 26. Um, probably in a little bit we'll change those to something more like 20 and 200 just because this is a very long term uh, chart. Um, but in this video and probably the next video we're going to be working on adding the uh, relative strength index um, to our figure here. Uh, the other thing I think we'll do is move volume and overlay volume onto the stock price chart and it shouldn't be too big of an issue because we will just set the alpha here low enough so we can actually see through it um, to pricing data if it is overlapping. So that's what we're going to do and uh, so yeah let's get started. So we'll close out of this and the first thing we really need to do is come down to the axes and we need to make room for uh, this new chart. So the first thing we want to do is inset, you know, AX1, we're going to start this at uh, 10, zero, not zero, 00. And then the volume chart, um, for now, let's just comment out uh, volume. Uh, so we'll just do a quote, quote, quote. And then again here. And I think that'll cover AX2. So let's make sure that we, you know, um, set this up right. Okay, cool. So now we've you know got rid of volume, and now we've got a spot up here where we're going to put uh, the RSI chart. And we also don't have dates yet on this chart, but that's okay. We'll probably add them, but um, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. So now what we want to do is add. Um, I guess we should overlay volume first. So let's just, I guess we'll go right under this and do it. Eventually we'll just delete all of this, but we'll leave it here because we probably can copy and paste some of it. So I'm going to call this AX1V for AX1 volume. And it's going to share the axis. So basically what you do is AX1.twinX. And that's it. So it just shares that axis. So now what we want to do, let's see. I think what we'll do, we can take all of this and even let's see I think we'll take that too um, okay we'll just copy that paste it and then we need to change you know the starting name so we'll do that and just go through paste 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 and paste okay so now we've got that we don't really need a grid on it or don't want a grid on it so that's good um, I think we're all set. Let's graph this and see how it looks. The, the data might be too big. That's my only fear, but let's graph and see what happens. Yes, it's a, it's a little large, but it's not the end of the world. You know, you can change the size. I'll show you guys how to change the size. It looks cool, but yeah, sometimes it can get annoying if it's over uh, overlapping stuff. But as you can see, um, you know, we, we don't really have any tick parameters there because we got rid of them and all that kind of stuff. And really, volume, you're really looking for, like, a change of direction or amplitude. You don't really care very much about, like, the actual digit. But anyway, you can see it's overlapping here. But if we zoom in, you know, you can still see the lines. So it just kind of works out. Um, so, yeah, so now we've got the volume overlaying. Now, um, I kind of think it's a little big on the... Uh, it, size wise like it's taking up a lot of this chart but it does look cool so I don't really know you can just kind of decide how you want to do that and the way that you can um, kind of dictate how much space it's going to take you can do something like this so ax one uh, v dot set underscore y limit now obviously the lowest it can be a zero and then the highest it can be you can set um, this number here now let me show you what happens so let's say we use a five um, we'll save that, we'll run it. And now you can see that it's much smaller, right? Um, and then let's say we do a 2. Okay, so save that, we'll run it. And you'll see that it's actually bigger because we set a smaller number. And now what it's doing is like, think of it as the y axis. So, like, if the y axis goes to 100 and the highest data set is 50, it will take up, you know, half of the chart. If the axis goes to 200 and it's 50, it's only going to take up a quarter of the chart. You understand? So, like, the bigger that number, 
the smaller this data set will be. And um, I guess we'll, I'll leave it there as like a two. You can just decide what you want to do with it. Um, but anyway, so that's how you'll, we can handle that. Um, now the next thing we would want to do right here, we can just comment this out. Um, later on, we're going to want it again when we add like the uh, MACD, for example, so that'll go below it. But right now, RSI is going to go above it. Um, it's there. Uh, one thing that we do kind of need to do is um, add the color, right? I think it's there, but it's probably black at the moment. So we'll close that back. Um, so if you really wanted to fix that, again, we are going to have um, something go below it in just a few more videos. But just in case all you really care about is the uh, RSI, you can change this AX1, tick params X, what color you want, white. And I think that'll give us the parameters. Yeah, there they are. Um, and then we can also um, angle them if you want. So I think we actually have that data here. So instead of AX2, and now it's AX1, of course. Um, so AX1, get the tick labels, save that, run it. Where's our error? Well, that's awkward. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, do this, this. Oh, good lord. <laughs> um, okay, we want the legend. I'm sorry, I got kind of like lost in my uh, quotes here. So really what we want to do, keep this here, this here, and then... Okay, please work. <laughs> Getting lost in my quotes. All right, there we go. Cool. So now we've got it, uh, you know, the date's looking right. And now we've got this open box here. So now what we want to do is actually add a box to put RSI in. And doing that's pretty simple. I mean, we've done this quite a few times. Um, the other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just, I think we'll just delete this because it's just wasting space now because we're never going to go back to that. So I'm going to delete it. If you really liked it, you could keep it there if you want. But I like the overlay better. So now what we're going to want to do is add um, another axis. And what I'm going to do, since it's going to take like all of the same stuff, right? Like it's going to look very similar. And I, I guess we'll leave the grid because it'll be uh, it'll be an interesting grid though. I'll show you guys later. But so we'll just copy this and try and decide if I want to put it above. Um, in theory, it does kind of go above. Um, I guess for now, for now we'll put it above, but it might end up being the case that we'll have to put it below it. But um, yeah, so we'll just put it right here. So come down here and we'll say AX0 equals, and just before I lose my copy and paste, I'm just going to paste that stuff that we copied. So AX0 equals plt.subplot to grid. And this is going to be a part of that same 5x4 grid that we had before comma it's going to start this one will start at zero zero right and then row span it's only going to span one row column span it's going to span four columns axis background is going to be that same background that we've been using so i'm just going to copy and paste it and close it off now the next thing we want to do is uh, copy and paste all of these to axis zero Uh, we can get rid of this. We definitely want to get rid of the Y limit there. Um, and then let's just go ahead and say plt.y label. And in here we'll throw in RSI. Something like that. Okay, let's see if this uh, indeed chart. Wow, I just keep getting these errors. Uh, what do we do? Oh, we probably just didn't close this off all the way. Let's see. There we go. That should do it. Yes. Okay, so I bring this over, and we see that there's some date here that we'll have to fix that in a second. Um, or is it an X? I think it's probably the date. I'm not sure why it's showing a zero there, but um, yes, yeah, so we'll get to that in a bit. Um, but anyway, the box is now there. 
I don't see the RSI, probably because there's no the color isn't there or something. Um, we'll deal with that in a bit. But anyway, the box is there for us. So let's close out of this. Um, let's scroll down to the bottom now. Because now this chart is more than just um, stock price, right? So let's get rid of this. And now the title will just straight up be stock, color, yellow, or white. Um, the next thing we want to do is instead of AX1, let's just delete this and say now we just don't want anything on AX0. Save that, we'll run this. And here's our chart now. Um, the other thing I wouldn't mind doing is we could prune the uh, lower uh, thing there. So let's see if we actually have a prune function already. I think we already did one, right? No. Nope. I swear we've already coded a prune, but anyway, so we'll add that. Um, we'll just do that right here. So to prune it, I really think we've done this, but plt.gca, it was probably on the, uh, the volume thing that we just deleted. Um, so plt.gca, no, no parameters there. yaxes.set underscore major underscore locator parameter m ticker dot capital M A X N L locator and then what we want to actually do here is prune the lower the other thing you can do is like specify how many ticks you want on the y axis there but this this will solve our problem at the moment well sort of solve the problem and that you know they're still kind of kissing but what we're going to end up doing later is um, Really, there's only going to be two lines here, the 70 and the 30 for the RSI. So that's not really going to be an issue. So I'm not going to go too hard on fixing that. But anyway, that's how you would make it look at least okay for now. Um, the other thing, our RSI isn't showing. I wonder if we, let's see. Yeah, we'll just copy this down here. AX1, Y-axis label, color. Um, let's put that right here. This won't really matter either because we're going to change this as well later on probably. But um, just for the sake of teaching how to do it, might as well show it. Okay, so I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to cut the video here. And in the next video, we'll be talking about the actual mathematics, generating the RSI, and actually like plotting that RSI on here. There's a lot of really cool stuff that we can do just by putting up the RSI here. So uh, definitely something to look forward to. And uh, stay tuned to the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.